All right, so I'm going to give folks a, another minute or so and then uh, kind of dive into what I want to share today. So anyway, if you're tuning in and you want to say hi, you can pop into the comments and, and let me know that you're out there and, and uh, let me know where you're tuning in from. And then we'll go ahead and get started in, in about you know, a little less than a minute or so. <clears throat> okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started. And I wanted to kind of, while well, I was thinking about today and kind of like, what do I want to to do and, and share with you all? And um, what happened was I was working on something just yesterday. I, I was just kind of like in the mood, like I wanted to work on something, but was really tired. And so I just grabbed some graphite drawing pencils and a piece of paper and uh, I sat down and just, I did one of my crack things. So I've been doing this like crack series of artworks. And I was, I was like, oh, let me try doing that in graphite. And it, the nice thing about graphite is it's like going home for me. Like that was the material that I started with. I mean, when I, when I was a kid drawing, you know, with a pencil was, was where it all started. And of course, when I was a little kid, it was crayons. And then, you know, I, I, Kind of graduated to um, colored pencils and then to paint and things like that. But pencil was the was the thing that I could always come back to because you know I could go and buy a brand new drawing pencil for you know less than a dollar at that time and you know I learned all about the different hardnesses and the, and the different kinds of uh, leads that were available and and it really just drawing is kind of what I'm grounded in. That's what I started with and. And uh, so I was working on that and I'll sh uh, if I remember where I put it, I'll grab it and share it with you. But then I thought, well, maybe that's what I'll kind of focus on today in the journal, not so much the graphite, but the shading part. And um, last week, whenever I was doing this, I kind of created a space in my journal that looked like it was sinking into the page. And it's something that I, that I kind of wonder if a lot of folks, especially if you're self-taught or if you're kind of a beginner, if that's something that you um, sort of know how to do. And so I thought I'd go ahead and kind of focus on that. And to me, it's just like getting back to shading is, is like I said, it's like kind of coming home. So um, that's kind of what I want to focus on today. So let me go ahead and switch this over and uh, we'll, we'll dive in. All right, let me adjust my light. For some reason, it decided to change. All right, so this was the spread that I started, that I worked on last time. And, uh, you know, I kind of created this big kind of crack shape space in, down the middle. And, you know, even right now, you can really see that it does look like it sinks in. And I use a little bit of white. And I was using my ink tense pencils. So I did the, you know, several layers of, of green and stuff, and then did this kind of darker green crack in the middle. And it does, does kind of sink in. And so what I want to do today is I want to enhance that. I really want to kind of kind of push that and kind of um, make it even more pronounced. And like I said, I'm gonna do some shading. But here's the this is the the image that I was working on yesterday and today, just using different graphite pencils. I started off with a typical uh, number two pencil, the yellow school pencil that you might be familiar with, and just kind of sketched it out, did some shading, and then I used an 8B pencil to get the real dark values, and um, just really found myself kind of getting lost in the shading. And so I wanted to kind of do that today, but I wanted to do it with colored pencil because I always feel like colored pencil is a great way to really bump up things in the in the journal. So um, I've got a set here that I'm going to use. This is a Faber Castell. These are their uh, polychromos, which are um, artist uh, professional quality. So they are expensive. Um, these are an oil based colored pencil, so they're a little bit creamier. Then like the, um, some, a lot of people use uh, Faber-Castell and, or not Faber-Castell, but uh, Prismacolor and they have wax in them. So sometimes it, 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 there's like this chalky kind of dust that gets on it. It's actually the wax coming out of the pencil. Um, this doesn't have that. So this, these pencils are 
high quality, uh, professional quality, they're oil based, they blend very well. And this is a set of 120. And fortunately, somebody gave this to me a long time ago. And so I didn't actually have to purchase it. Um, but the nice thing is they sell them individually. Um, so I've gone through and I pulled out some of the pencils that I wanted to use today. And so sticking with my green, of course, I've got some greens. I actually have three greens. I have a dark green, which might look black in the video. I have more of a medium green and I have a more of a yellowish green. I don't know if I'll use them all. And if you don't have a set that has like a wide variety of, of colors, so maybe it only has like a dark blue and a light blue, then, you know, just use that. Um, or some, sometimes you'll, ha you'll have a really small set and you'll have like just one blue, you know, so there's ways that we can kind of work with that. And then I, all, I did grab a dark blue. This is actually um, indigo and it's, it's a very, actually it's dark indigo. So a very dark blue, probably the darkest blue there is uh, as far as colored pencils. And then over here, I have white, of course, for my highlights, but this is not black. This is sapia. It's actually dark sapia, which is, sapia is a very dark brownish, grayish color. Um, and so I'm going to mix the browns and the blues and the greens to get the real dark values. I don't use black. And if you've tuned into some of the stuff I've done before, I don't use black a lot um, in my work. What I do, I use brown and blue as a great mixture, especially for something like this. And then to throw in some green, I'm going to get some like really nice dark greens. So anyway, I'm going to use these and I'm going to really highlight and um, intensify kind of the depth in my, in my piece here. So again, if you're tuning in and you want to say hi, it's always awesome to see who's out there and who is uh, watching. So um, you, know, you can pop into the comments and say, uh, let me know that you're watching. So I'm going to start with the sapia. Some people start with the lighter colors. Some people start with the medium colors. Um, what I find it, it sometimes it depends on the pencil. Um, there are some pencils that layer on top of each other very well. So it doesn't really matter which ones you start with, but some other pencils, it's better to start with the dark because then you could layer the lighter on top. And so I'm just going to take the uh, sapia pencil. Like I said, it's a dark brown. Um, actually, let me show you something first. So I've got just a card here. This is just an index card. Um, and so when I shade, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by pressing hard to get a dark value. And then as I shade it out, I'm going to lighten up my pressure, lighten up my pressure, lighten up my pressure, okay? Depending on how far I want that dark to go out. And that's the key. And I've shaded a lot so I can get a nice, even, gradual change from the dark to the light. And that's kind of how I do that. So this is that sapia. It, all, it does look black. It's a very, very dark brown, okay? Um, but... I wanted to show you this on that card because sometimes whenever I do it on top of the ink tense pencil that's there, it's harder to see. Um, so I love doing this on top of the ink tense. So I, you know, with the ink tense, it it's really cool. It covers the the paper. It it gives this like real painterly effect. But sometimes it's just not neat, and there might be like dark marks or um, there's some spaces where there's glue where it didn't stick. And then the edges are really hard to keep very sharp. So coming back with a colored pencil is a great way of um, sort of just tidying it up, but it's really gonna intensify the shadow. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm using this darker sapia color and um, just to put some shadow in there. And like I said, it, it looks almost black. The reason, well, there's a couple reasons that I don't use black. And if you've taken a class with me before, or uh, I don't know if I mentioned it here on the live streams, but um, first of all, black is a very unnatural kind of color. So when we look at like the shadows in leaves and in, in tree bark, a lot of times we're, we're not seeing pure black. And so if we use black, like straight black from a pencil or from the paint, it can look very unnatural. And so having a very dark brown is a great way of just, it looks a little bit more natural. And then by mixing in like the blue, 
Now, if this was all red, I wouldn't um, be, well, I, I would probably still use the blue because the blue and the brown are gonna make a very dark, rich value. And that tends to be my, like, the combination I use to get my darkest values. And like I said, just for, to me, I just find that it, it looks more natural than just straight black from the pencil or from a tube of paint. Um, and the other reason is that when I learned, and I don't know if I mentioned this before, but um, when I was an undergrad getting my teaching degree, I took a painting class and the teacher was like, you know, don't want you to buy black paint. I want you to get a dark brown, um, a raw umber, which this is, the sapia is very close to raw umber. It's a very dark brown. And then she, uh, she was like, okay, I want you to get a dark blue. And I think it was ultramarine blue, which is a very dark blue. Um, and those could be mixed to get something that's very close to black. And so that's uh, just kind of how I learned. Um, but like I said, it's not just because I learned it that way. It's because it just looks a little bit more natural when you use the browns. If I was doing like the like a red, I might use a warmer brown. So this sapia is a very cool brown. It's very dark, but it's on the cool side. And so that's why I'm using it with the, uh, with the greens. And so if you compare the two sides, you can really see how all of a sudden, I mean, this is very much darker than over here. And I haven't really shaded much. So when I shade, I try to keep my lines parallel, you know, so like on this little part here now, you know, the, it's more at an angle. So my, my strokes are at an angle. And so as I come out and I get lighter, then I can lighten up on my pressure. Now here where that index card is glued down, I've got a weird lip right there from the card. So I have to be a little bit more careful. That's the only thing with doing mixed media and doing shading on top of mixed media is that you have to contend with the uh, maybe the different surfaces underneath. So often I start with a, the medium color, but like I said, um, with some pencils, it's actually better to start with the dark value because what happens is as you build up layers of pencil, there's no tooth for the uh, on the paper. So paper has a surface. It's uh, drawing paper tends to have a rougher surface um, than other paper. So it has just a little bit of a what we call a tooth. Um, and so if we looked at it in a, underneath a microscope, it would look very rough because of all the different fibers of paper there. Um, the smoother it is, the better it is for like marker and uh, pen and ink. But if it's slightly rough, it's great for drawing because that rough surface is actually what catches hold of the, in this case, the, the color pigment that's in the pencil. And so if you build up layers of the colored pencil, you end up kind of filling in that texture. And oftentimes colored pencil will look very shiny and that's in part because if it has wax, like I said, a lot of pencils have wax, even though this is more of an oil based, this pencil still gets shiny because what happens is it fills in all the little rough, uh, little like divots and, and rough uh, surfaces, rough spaces. And then as you shade and, and go on top, it kind of gets rubbed, it gets burnished and it will get shiny. So if that surface gets, gets real shiny, a lot of times it's really hard to go back in with like the dark color on top. And so if we do it at first, we can get that dark value in and then we can build on top of it. But like I said, it kind of depends on your pencil. See, like I know these pencils, they layer really well um, and you can kind of do it in any order but a lot of artists like to either work from dark to light or light to dark.
And you can really see it like with this pen, this brown, this sepia, I'm really keeping it close to the edge of that, of this crack. And so it's kind of just creating a darker shadow very close. Um, with the other pencils that I'll probably draw the darker value out a little bit. And that's why I've got that kind of darker green. And actually the darker that I make this whole crack, this whole surface, um, the more it's gonna sink into, or at least appear to sink in, it doesn't actually sink in. It's not actually three-dimensional. We get that illusion of the three dimensions. So oftentimes whenever you're shading, especially if you don't have a lot of experience with it, your marks might look just very scribbled. Um, and it just, it takes a lot of practice to really get your shading to be very smooth. And then also you're seeing, you know, my shading from a distance. So you're not seeing all the little uneven places and the different values and such that, that uh, are happening. So you're kind of, you know, you're not seeing it up close and seeing all the imperfections. And also, I think when we look at other people's work, we tend to like not see the, the imperfections as much as we do in our own work. I'm gonna sharpen my pencil, so I apologize for the noise. So again, this is that, uh, I picked up a dark indigo and this might not do too much. And, I, and I'm not gonna press super hard um, actually, it probably won't take as long as I did with the, uh, the sapia. So that sapia, like I said, is a very cool brown. And I'm making the shadow even cooler by using the blue. One thing is if I wanted to get really light, I move my finger back, my fingers back on my pencil. And that will allow me to just put a little bit of pressure and do much lighter shading. Now with this, uh, with the surface of my journal pages here, it's, it's very bumpy. So sometimes it's really hard to get very even shading with it. So this is a, this can be a lengthy process. And what I find is that it can be very meditative. Especially since this is a very abstract thing. Um, if I was shading a face, um, it might not be so meditative just because I'm really, you know, I'd be really trying to pay attention to getting all the values right to make things look three dimensional. But something like this, where it, it it's okay if things aren't a certain way, you know, if the shading's not just right, it's still gonna look three-dimensional. So with the blue, with this dark indigo blue, I'm trying to draw out the, the shadows, the shading a little bit further than I did with the brown. The nice thing with doing the ink tents first is that I just, I really have this nice base layer of color. And so I don't have to be like super picky about my shading. Um, I don't have to press super hard um, because there's color underneath it. 
And so if you're using colored pencil directly on white paper, the white paper shows through. So that again, that pe uh, paper has texture. So as you're shading and you're getting those lighter values, you're getting those lighter values because you're putting down less pigment and it's not covering up all of the paper. So you have some of those little, little low surfaces uh, in that texture that are showing through. And so what happens is you have to put a lot of pressure on it to, to really cover up all those white specks. Um, and you end up using a lot of pencil. So by kind of doing the, the ink tents first, you have this really nice uh, base layer. And then what I find is that you just, you can, you end up using less colored pencil. And so this takes a while. But I'm, I'm really building up these like real rich shadows now, just really making it look like it's a little bit deeper into the paper, making it look a little bit more solid, hopefully. Okay. And so I'm just kind of working down. Now I'm going to grab this dark green. So this color really ties in with that dark green that I used with the ink tents. Now, because these um, are made by different companies, so the ink tents, it was made by Derwent and uh, Faber-Castell is a different brand. Um, even though they're different, the color, they have very similar colors. And then, you know, with this set of 120, I can really pick out colors that are very similar. They might not be an exact match. Um, however, if you're using a brand like, uh, like I know Prismacolor, I use, I use Prismacolor for years and I use their watercolor pencils and their watercolor pencils are very similar to, to the ink tents, um, but their watercolor instead of the water soluble ink, um, but still very bright, very vivid, very intense, professional quality. Um, I use those for the long, longest time. And the thing is that their watercolor pencils match their colored pencils and they go by the same name. So there's a true blue with the watercolor pencil and a true blue in their colored pencil set. And so, and they match really well. So they kind of match across products. Whereas with the uh, Derwent Ink Tense pencils, they have such weird names. Um, you know, it, they, or a lot of them do. Some of them don't. Some of them have like, you know, apple green and, and uh, uh, leaf green. But like I noticed that I have one here. I think this one is it. Yeah. So this is leaf green for um, Faber Castell. The Ink Tense pencil, leaf green is not a bright green like that. So just because it has the same name from a different different company doesn't mean it's a, it's the exact same color or even close. So, um, but what I noticed, like I I don't I've never really used the Ink Tense watercolor pencils, so I kind of wonder if their watercolor pencils are named just like their colored pencils. I really like the polychromos just because they are, um, they're, they're professional quality. They're, they're very light fast, which means that they don't fade much in bright light. And then also they, because they're oil-based as well. And I think Derwent came out with light fast pencils that are oil-based as well, but they're not, when I say oil-based, sometimes people think that they're like oil pastels and they're not, they're, they're not, soft like that. They have an oil in them that makes them easy to blend and, and things. But uh, yeah, some of your higher quality colored pencils 
have uh, are oil based instead of wax based. There might still be some wax in them. I don't, I'm not sure. I don't know the the complete makeup of it, but. So where I have some of the pencil is like, or some of the papers like bumpy, I kind of put my fingers there and try to try to hold it down a little bit. Just to make it a little bit flatter so that my shading's a little bit neater. So if you got any questions or comments, you know, feel free to pop in there in the comments and just kind of look and see if anyone had said anything or asked anything. Um, so again, you know, it's a slower process. I could I could be a little bit faster with it since this is in my journal. You know, sometimes I'm not so worried that it's super neat. Um, but you know, just kind of I've gotten into a rhythm. So again, you can really see how it's gotten much darker and it's really kind of popping out. Uh, I have a couple different greens, and I think they're probably very similar. So I think I'm going to skip this one and do the light one. And so with the light one now, I can. I can really press hard and I'm kind of blending it into the darker color. And I mean, this, this lighter green, they call it grass green, um, pretty much matches the light green that I had used with the ink tents pencils. And so what I'm finding is that with this pencil, I can press pretty hard and work pretty fast because it blends in. I mean, it really blends into the lighter greens that are uh, in the lighter areas, but then it blends right into the darker values as well. And oftentimes with the colored pencil, it's the lighter pencil that really blends into the darker pencil. And so if you're using the lighter pencil on top of the darker values, it blends in a little bit better than trying to put dark on top of the light. It's another reason to start with your darker values first. But what a lot of people do is they jump kind of back and forth because sometimes, because I think, you know, you don't want to get too dark right away. And so sometimes you'll do this and go, oh, okay, I really want to come back and make, make something really dark. What I like about the colored pencil, I think it brings a, a certain richness to the the color um, that the ink tents just doesn't get. I mean, I love the ink tents and I love building layers, but I think because you brush water over it, the the color isn't as bright or as intense as it could be. And then sometimes people will say, well, why don't you just use the ink tents like the colored pencils and just shade on top? And I would say, you know, if, if you only had one set, you know, and you just had colored pencil or the, or watercolor pencil or the ink tents, then yeah, I would do that. But since I have a separate set of colored pencil, I'm going to do that. The, but the other thing is that, um, you know, if I just use the ink tents or if I use water soluble pencil as the final layer, if it gets wet, it's going to bleed. Whereas I know with the uh, colored pencil, I can paint over it. It's not going to go anywhere. You know, so whether it has wax or has oil in it, it's, it's pretty impervious to paint. So I might decide later, like, oh, I want to paint this in darker, or I want to put something on top. And uh, it's not really going to go anywhere. Okay.
So when I shade, um, I go in two kind of general directions mostly, and you, you may be noticing. So I'm doing a lot of diagonal, like a, just a 45 degree angle. And then I'm doing a lot of up and down. And it's kind of funny, I'm kind of doing more up and down over here, more diagonal over here. I think just because of the way it fits into the surface. Of course, as I'm going around it, I'm kind of going in the direction that the line is going. But overall, I generally shade up and down and then crisscross it. So I'm doing cross hatching for those of you, those of you familiar with the uh, terminology. So basically it's when your lines crisscross cross hatching. Okay. So again, that just, I mean, really that darker value just really makes these edges pop out and it just feels like a shadow. So if you kind of just think like, you know, light shining down and there's a little bit of a shadow there, just makes this look like a little bit of a canyon or it's like just sunk in. And because I didn't go too dark in the middle, um, it almost just feels like, you know, this part broke off and like, just fell. And so like this light green in here is about the same kind of light green as here. But if I go over the whole thing and make it even darker, it's going to kind of push it down even further. So that might be something that, that I do later. Um, but then I'm going to come back. I've got my white. So the white, just like I did last time, um, I had used the white ink tents along the edge and it, it showed up, but not not a whole lot like I mean it was you could see it and it kind of helped pop things out so this is going to be real subtle so just like last time with the ink tents this depending on you know the white is very you know it's light right so this is very light this kind of yellowish green here um, so there's not a lot of contrast so you're not going to see it but down here where it's a little bit darker, I might be able to press hard enough to really lighten that up. Now with the colored pencil, you can't erase it. So if you're like, oh, well, I really wanna put some white on top of where there's some dark value, it might not show up very well. And so, uh, but what a lot of people find is that you can scrape, scrape off um, the colored pencil with an X-Acto knife. So sometimes you can do that. You might not be able to remove it all. But you can at least lighten the value and kind of scrape off some of the, the buildup of colored pencil. So again, it's kind of just a bit subtle, but just that little bit of what, uh, white along the edge, a little bit of highlight will really start to make it pop up. And if you sort of just look from side to side, you know, like especially here, since they're so close, it's like, okay, yeah, there's, this is, you know, this looks a lot lighter than this right here. So, you know, it's just something to, to kind of, you know, pay attention to. Again, it's really subtle, but just that little subtle touch can really kind of help make it pop out. So I don't do this just on like big spaces like this. Um, this idea can be really used anywhere in the journal. Um, and I, I really feel because of the, the smooth nature of the pencil that I do feel like this is more of kind of a finishing technique. So not that I ever really consider my pages finished, but you know, it's like, I, I'm not going to really be able to do much on top of it. Yeah, I can kind of paint over it. Um, I might be able to glue something down, but if it's real slick and waxy or slippery or real shiny, things might not glue on top of it really well. So, you know, kind of where I've done the shading the most along the edges, I probably wouldn't do anything. I think in the middle, I could probably do something because I don't have a whole lot 
of, uh, of the pigment of the pencil down. So I, I often do this kind of when I feel like a page is getting close or I'm kind of like, oh yeah, I'm kind of feeling this is resolved. Um, I'll come back and, and really kind of bump up some of these things, but it just, just because I did this kind of crack last time, I just thought it'd be really, really cool to kind of see how that could be enhanced. So, I mean, it's not super dramatic. Um, it would be really cool to kind of see, look at the, the picture at the beginning of the video and kind of see how this page has changed a little bit. Um, but, you know, just looking through and finding other spaces that I could do this with, you know, so I might think about like, oh, there's some, maybe I wanted to get, pull out a dark, this is kind of an ochre color. So maybe I want to pull out like a darker brown and shade around that, or maybe I want to pull out some red or um, some of the, maybe some of the sapia, you know, even, and something like this where a lot of the ink tents is kind of faded, I could come back in and shade and really bring things out, maybe shade around the purple circle. Um, there's all kinds of things that I can do with this. I don't know if there are, um, I don't know if I have done much shading in this book. In this one, I did some paint around. Um, just, I don't think I've done much with the colored pencil. I think I've demo demoed it before in different classes that I was teaching in workshops. I think here, I think maybe there might be some around some of this. Again, just kind of like, like flipping through, trying to find, I mean, like a, a, a space like this, if I grab my, just, just the indigo, if I just grab one pencil and go in and start to shade, you know, that indigo goes really nicely on top of that. And I can just add a little bit of value. And kind of get a little bit darker next to that dark line. So, you know, if you if you see this part here, you kind of see how it just feels like it's a little darker there, a little bit of a shadow. Just kind of just kind of makes this the index cards here kind of pop out even more. And so kind of creating those uh, those different levels, you know, kind of making it look like certain things pop out and certain things pop in or kind of yeah, pop in, kind of go into the page. And that's that was something as a kid when I was learning about art that really fascinated me that I could kind of create this this illusion that something looked three dimensional just by using a single pencil or you know several pencils if I'm using a whole handful of colored pencil. But you could do this with graphite pencil and do some shading, you know, grab some colored pencil and and just you know go through and find like little spaces. You know, here, oh, here I did some blue around this. I, yeah, I knew I did some colored pencil in here. But I usually like, again, like I was saying, uh, oftentimes I'm finding pages like this page feels like it's getting kind of pretty resolved. So maybe this would be a place where I'd come back with the colored pencil. Um, you know, uh, like this might be kind of interesting to go through. I did a bunch of spirals, which maybe you can see, but it might be really interesting to come back with a uh, red colored pencil and shade. And all of a sudden, you know, that gets darker, that gets darker, go, gets kind of pushed back into the background. And then this part really starts to pop out then. That might be really interesting. Right. You know, and again, where I have lines, oftentimes that's a great place to do some shading or around squares. So I used ink tents around there, but what if I go back with that indigo and shade it or some of that sapia and shade it, I could really make things darker and that yellow would really pop out. Anyway, just kind of thought I'd share. Um, just, you know, like I was saying at the beginning, I was doing some shading and was like, you know, I really, Kind of, kind of meditative and was just really kind of digging it, digging into it and really kind of feeling it. 
Uh, I noticed that uh, Barbara mentioned in the comments, she says, falling into the abyss. I don't know whether she was mentioning or uh, commenting on how she felt like just shading. I kind of feel like sometimes with shading, it's it's such a meditative kind of repetitive thing that it can be just like, like next thing you know, like an hour goes by and you're like, oh, where did the time go? Or maybe, maybe she was uh, commenting on um, the image there, but uh, yeah, it's just, just something that's a simple idea. It's a great way of, of adding some depth to your pages. It's a great way just to kind of get your hand moving, uh, especially if you're tired or you just, you don't know what to make. It's just a great way to kind of add to pages. So anyway, if you got any questions or any comments, like I said, pop them into the comments and I'm happy to try to answer things for you. And uh, yeah, so I appreciate you appreciate you tuning in and um, you know this is always available for later viewing and I'm also I did remember to record it and I'm going to pop it over into YouTube as well for folks to kind of watch there so um, thanks for joining me I appreciate it and uh, like I said if you have any questions just let me know and until next time happy creating <laughs>